Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bloom and Bounty. I'm Cabrina or KB and in today's episode we're going to be diving into the upcoming planting schedule for spring 2024 and how we're preparing for this season ahead. There's a lot that goes into it. But before we dive into the rooted reflections, I wanted to let you bloomers know that I appreciate the feedback we've received so far on this podcast, particularly with last week's episode, Kicking Off 2024. A few of you reached out to me to let me know how helpful that episode was and how you appreciated the extra prompts and the breakdown of each step and the exclamation, exclamation, explanation. Um, So thank you for delivering me such positive feedback. All right. Okay, let's take a moment to check in. As we're embracing the anticipation of spring, I know some of you guys are like, spring? It's winter. And I get that. But for those that are planting on a farm and or in the garden, in the backyard, wherever you guys are, um, we're we're thinking along the same lines, what are we planning for the upcoming season? And that is spring. And I really love embracing the rhythm of the season, but I know this is the start of the new year and it's still very much in these feelings of excitement, feeling some stress, it being a little scary. Um, but there's so much gratitude wrapped up in all of those emotions, right? So this week I've been, immersing myself in the preparations for the upcoming planting schedule, reflecting on the challenges and wins that are going to lie ahead because we just did one um, for this planting season that we're in or for the one that just um, passed, excuse me. So with, without really being too negative though, there is a reminder to find joy in this process of growth and to embrace um, the beauty of the journey because there is a lot of that too. So for those of us that are thinking of what you're, you know, what we're planning for spring, uh, wherever you are located, um, just kind of keep that in mind that there's joy in this process of growth. We're going to face that, that beauty that we're looking for in the journey. It's coming, coming soon. <laughs> this episode is proudly sponsored by KB and Bloom, a beacon of support and inspiration for BIPOC women seeking wellness and lifestyle content that resonates with their experiences. As you dive into the stories and reflections in Bloom and Bounty, remember that each episode is made possible by the unwavering support of KB and Bloom. Whether you're turning in for the farming tales, the creative insights, or a moment of introspection, KB and Bloom stands as a steadfast companion, cultivating connections and growth. Explore the site for yourself at kbandbloom.com a treasure trove of articles, affirmations, and content crafted with your journey in mind. Now let's ease on back into this week's episode. So when is transplant day? Well, soon, (laughs) because January is flying by. And before you know it, planting season will be upon us again. And we want to make sure we have all our ducks in a row. Now, let's quickly kind of differentiate between crops grown from seeds and those nurtured from seedlings. What are we going to be growing from seeds and which ones from our list of um crops will be from seedlings. Okay. So the crops that will sprout from seeds include on our list, uh, our beans, lima beans that includes snow peas. That also includes Southern peas. I'm currently pondering over which beans to choose. If I'm being all the way honest with you, because I go to my local garden garden centers and they have what they have. So whatever is available is what I'm going to grab. Um, That will be great for planting season um, ahead. Now we're also going to have melons, melons from seeds. And that includes melons like what you think of, watermelon, honeydew melon, cantaloupe. 
uh, peppers, especially sweet peppers. There was a variety that I thought I had picked up and I keep saying this, it's not in my farm toolkit, but I thought I had picked up a variety, which are different colors. They were like purple, yellow, orange peppers, sweet peppers, and I didn't, I guess. So I have to go back um, and, and purchase those, those seeds. Um, what else? Okra, corn are also on the seed list. Um, what about seedlings? So seedlings are young plants that have grown from seeds, nurtured until they're ready for transplanting. So these are kind of ready to go in the ground. When you pick up seedlings from a garden center or wherever you guys are, um, they'll tell you, you, you know, you want to make sure you put these in, in the ground in the next, you know, one to two days. And if it's longer than that, and I never recommend for you to wait longer than that, um, they'll at least my garden center, they have like towels and you kind of damp them to keep that moisture in. And, and so you don't lose your seedlings and you wrap that in. Um, and if you buy a lot, make sure you label your seedlings. Um, so when it comes to transplant day, you know which ones are, say, you know, your your greens and which ones are your peppers. So you know what, what you're planting. So make sure you label them if you're not planting them within the next one to two days. All right. So seedlings, what I'll be grabbing um, for seedlings, um, I am thinking right now beets, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, uh, carrots, um, eggplant, cucumber, some leafy herbs, collodium, which is a lovely flower with benefits um, similar to uh, the marigolds, lettuce, tomatoes, and turnip greens. These are kind of for whatever reason, I haven't figured out if I'm going to actually be set with these. Also, it's determined by the availability of my local garden center, as I mentioned, as I mentioned before. And so I, I know I have my eyes on eggplants, um, leafy herbs, some more Brussels sprouts, which we've already planted in the ground. We were sort of ahead of schedule um, with that. Some beets. Broccoli, also another thing we've planted. Carrots is also another thing. Eggplant, we haven't planted yet. We have some leafy herbs, but leafy herbs meaning just one variety of them. I believe we have uh, basil. So I would like to plant more leafy herbs, obviously, um, since it's on my list. Uh, so we'll see. All right. <laughs> I just have to say here is what I love about spring is that it aligns with the themes we explore here on the podcast. Bloom and spring just naturally go hand in hand. And here in our Florida soil, <laughs> there's an abundance of possibilities. And I know that I made it seem in the beginning episodes, it might have been one or two, where you can't plant things and I mean, you can manipulate your soil and your environment to plant things that, and I don't want to knock down Florida soil, but there are some challenges, you know, with the soil that you're working with in your environment. So there's just some things that may not be the best for our environment, but maybe three miles away is doing fine. So <laughs> I just want to say that, um, there is an abundance of possibilities. All right, now let's focus our attention on the shortest planting season. So that's anywhere from one to three months. Now what I've learned in our last planting season, that things have a specific window and you don't wanna miss that window. Otherwise, it could be potentially a waste of your time and energy. Sometimes it works out. I'm gonna say sometimes it does, okay? But if there's a planting season, particularly around some, some months, there's that for, it's there for a reason. So I'm not going to sit around and find out the hard way, basically is what I'm saying. So the crops that have this window um, from one to three months in their planting season, in the upcoming spring planting season for us, that includes broccoli, beets, Brussels sprouts, carrots, and cauliflower. They're ready to go in the ground today. Mm-hmm. 
and their planting season lasts through March for the majority of them. Now for our longer planting season crops exceeding three months, these include herbs, corn, eggplant, okra, which boasts the longest planting season. If I'm being honest, okra is like, we're out here, okay? You don't have to worry about us. If you want to plant us in March, that's fine. If you want to do April, we're here too. <laughs> Southern peas are also pretty much year round. Um, peppers. I'm actually eyeing some sweet peppers or a colorful variety. I think I mentioned this. Um, I, I thought I picked it up and I don't know. I, I have to go back to the garden center and get the, get those peppers because they do sell out. Like that's real. Oh, and on a quick note on melons, um, they're not joining the soil just, just yet. I mean, the, they probably will be a week behind. Um, but they, they actually have some of the longest, um, um, in the ground before they're ready, uh, before harvest. Like it takes about, I'm trying to think how many days to maturity. It could be anywhere from 50 to 60 days for a lot of the melons, the cantaloupes, the honeydew melon, the, the watermelon. I love melon. So I'm looking forward to this, this bounty. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, so as we're preparing for the earthly stage or the big day, there are some questions that I ask myself, even if I know the answer to them. <laughs> How often are we watering um, this soil? Um, and what do we need to prepare for transplanting these things into the soil? Um, I have to say though, the past two months have been so interesting because we've had cooler weather that usually lasts a couple of weeks that has surpassed all of our expectations because it's been 40 degrees some mornings. And then on top of that, it's been raining a lot more than usual for this time of year. So really when asking myself about the watering schedule, it really depends on the day. Um, and I advise anyone listening to this that is going to be planting um, some things in the ground, get to know your local weather. Um, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to that more. And your soil, pay attention to that as well to see what works best for you and your farm. Um, but we typically do two watering sessions for at least an hour or so based on what we have in, in the field for most of our crops on a perfect day. So when that's when that day isn't, there's no rain involved. And then for those of you that are curious about our soil preparation, Here's what we primarily focus on, focus on um, before planting our crops, but that could totally differ from, from region to region, um, from location to location. Um, one of the things we always do is clear the ground before anything else. We wanna make sure that it's clear of debris, of weeds, and any remnants from previous crops. Um, this creates a clear canvas for all the new plants we're putting into the ground. Um, we have drip tape, so we want to make sure that we're going to have that soon after we plant the things in the ground. If they're not ready the day of, of course, we'll use um, manual water. We'll, we'll do that ourselves. But if, if the drip tape isn't available, we already have, you know, the methods that we, we ensure that to make sure that they get enough um, water. And then what I do, and I know... Um, the other farmers do is we create a layout already. We organize this plant layout based on their com um, compatibility. Um, and we depending on, and this is where spacing requirements, it depends on what you're putting into the ground. Some may need more space. You know, some crops may need more space than others like tomatoes. I would say next time we plant them, they may need a little bit more space. Um, and other ones may not need as much space. And it also depends on the sunlight needs, you know. This this organization is gonna help you prevent overcrowding and optimize growing conditions. So we think about that. And then one of the other things we've been doing is um, ensuring that we have protective measures in place. So um, maybe that's installing a barrier or a stake or 
netting or row covers to safeguard plants like we did row covers for the strawberries because you know they're they're not great when it gets too cold um, in temperature we want to make sure you ha we have organic matter so it's enhancing the soil's fertility and structure by incorporating some organic matter like compost or um, some real well rotted manure um, these are things that are sustainable and they're going to help provide those essential nutrients um, which improves that soil water retention and drainage from what we've observed now I just want to say these steps are general guidelines and the specific requirements may vary based on the crops you're planting and the characteristics of your local soil so really pay attention to that um, those pieces the soil and the environment um, in which you're planting these things um, because you, you want to adapt these recommendations to suit the unique needs of your garden or farm some other options I was thinking of as I was getting ready to to record this episode is some people do soil testing they do an extra step of conducting the soil to understand its composition its nutrient levels the pH all of that um, double, double digging or tilling your planting area, um, creating planting beds. Some of you may prefer that. Um, if you're planting in a row in rows or beds, taking the time to shape and define them, um, applying mulch, um, adding a layer of mulch always helps retain mulch moisture, um, and suppress those weeds. So it just depends on, on what you're planting. Um, again, these are general these are extra things you could be doing, but they're general guidelines, but something to, to, to consider, of course. All right, now let's talk about the crops that I'm most excited about putting into the ground because uh, that's a thing. Um, as someone that is looking forward to harvest, I anticipate the thing that I'm anticipating the most is melons. Um, I am a melon and berry enthusiast and the prospect of having watermelon, cantaloupe and honeydew melon is really taking center stage for me maybe it's because melons are sweet i love their vibrant colors and i know the harvest is going to be so so satisfying um, most of the crops i mentioned earlier are ones i've seen at the harvest stage whether it's something i planted or if going to a farm and pick but there's something about melons i'm just so excited about i mean i believe it's because i've never planted them before um and to sit around and to be lucky enough to see their harvest. The smile is already forming on my face already. And it's more than just about planning. Like as I'm sitting here talking into this mic, it's about like savoring the fruits of our labor and a celebration of the melodic uh, journey from seed to, to harvest. Um, that is, that is, I'm just excited about that. Um. But if I'm being honest, there's been some challenges. Um, recent discoveries we've made with some fungi on our pole beans and black eyed peas. Now we planted these from seeds and they were actually one of the first crops to sprout and say hello to us. So it's sad to see it, but one of our farmer friends who has a horticultural degree and he knows quite a bit about this area. And so he'll be adding some neem oil to help curtail the intrusion. Now there are some pros about neem oil. It's like this sort of organic superhero in the farming world. At least from what I gather, because as soon as he said that he was adding that, I was like, well, let me, I talked to him, but I still had some questions. So I was like, let me look online. Um, it's derived from neem tree seeds and it acts as a natural pesticide, which disrupts the pest life cycles 
and it helps safeguard our, car, our crops. So, you know, I'm always here for an organic remedy that aligns with our commitment to sustainable farming, um, which is going to provide this effective and eco-friendly solution. So I'm here for it. I'm excited. I hope, 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 hope and hope that it helps um, bring back our, our beans. <laughs> As today's episode comes to an end, I want to reflect on all what's happening here. So this harmony of growth, the promise of the the planting season, and this hope I am carrying for the big day, the transplanting day, um, which I know will reward us with a beautiful, beautiful harvest. If you are someone who plans on sowing seeds or seedlings into the ground, let us know by leaving a review of this here podcast. I want to get to know you listeners and your farming journey. I think it'll be cool. Um, I thought that would be a great way for for me to get to know you is to to have a review. You could leave a review of the podcast and to let me know what's going on with you and your journey. Um, I wanted to leave you also with a quote today as I always do. And it's um, goes a little something like this. Remember Green's your color. You are spring. These words are by none other than Gwendolyn Brooks. And they're so befitting, I feel like, um, because they also resonate with the essence of our journey. A reminder that in every challenge, in every triumph or win, we're embodying the spirit of spring. So I thank you for joining me on this sort of comprehensive journey. And um, until next time, take care, self-care, and may your harvest be as vibrant as the colors that grace your farm or fields. And remember, you need you. Bloom and Bounty is brought to you by KB and Bloom and the Bloom Media Group. Follow this podcast to stay connected as weekly episodes are released and follow KB and Bloom on all social accounts. Go to kbandbloom.com for more info. Thank you.